what is going down, everybody, and welcome to the All Seas Collector's Edition podcast. My name is James. I'm your host, followed by my co-host, Trish. Ew. AJRDM. Cheers. Chris the Beard Packer, we're rolling in late from the south. He'll be here in a minute. You know how it is with Chris, always rolling on in. Waiting on them comic picks. Let's go. And then we got KS Productions behind the camera. Yo. And our Sounds you know good. great guest, my friend here, Josh. Thank you for being with us yeah, this weekend, my sure. friend. Thanks for having me. Super collector status. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh, yeah. <laughs> I like the pause. Thank you, sir. He's like, oh, you're talking about me. Yeah. 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 I'm just saying, for listening to us on this podcast, we like to give you all things. Yes, sir. So this month, we are giving away this Cat. Midnight Hunt pre release kit. Your chance to win it. All you guys have to do is like, comment, and share everywhere that podcasts are found. That is here on Facebook. That's over on YouTube, over on Twitter. You can get, you can reshare it. You can also find us on Podbean, Apple iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and more. About a dozen chances Radio. every week to win. Every entry in October counts towards this first set, uh, show of November. We're going to call who the winner is of our Midnight Hunt pre-release kit for the new Magic Gathering set. Awesome. We can't wait for that. We have sponsors for this podcast. We like to shout them out real quick. We got Game 2 Gamer. Yes, sir. And we got a brand new sponsor, and we'd like to welcome them in. Them in. It's Pocket. Pocket, Pocket Cards and Games Pocket. in Pierce, Colorado. Pierce, Colorado's. How long have they been in business, Kenny? Do you know? I believe they just started up not too long ago. They right on. They do uh, the smaller shows. And they're excited to come to the Fan Expo. Yeah, it's great. To, Fan Expo. Yeah, we're great to have yeah. them with it. Foggit Games, check them out online. Check them out on social media. Give them a like. And now, uh, you know, game on. Absolutely. If you guys are up in that northern Colorado area, they're right at, south of Nun there, a little north of Greeley. Great little area to check out. Go check out Pocket Games. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we have Game Exchange. Also, Angelo CDs and Records. Nicola Play. Thank you, guys. And we have All Seas Fan Expo coming up in March as our fan sponsor. And, of course, Smile High Sports Radio with Danny Williams, the Smile High Morning Show. Danny Williams. Danny Will. I haven't seen his smiling face around in a couple of days. <laughs> Danny, oh, listen, to a Monday, listen to a Monday morning on 908-98.1 FM or on milehighsportsradio.com. I'm pretty sure he's a... Uh... It's either him or Stefan that I'm taking down next week. Oh, really? Well, you're losing this week to me. So oh, don't you, we'll see about let's that. get past this week first, AJ. Yeah, but about. nobody cares about those fantasy teams. No, no they don't. <laughs> hey, we all care. We let's, all care. Let's roll into the markets. Gold, $1,757. Silver, $23.30. Also and the, up. And the Dow, up 535294 You know, silver and gold going up makes sense right now. The Dow going up with all the nonsense going up on in the supply chain makes no sense to me. The investors should not feel secure in the Dow at the moment. No, no I watched, uh, you know, I like to get pissed off every uh, Sunday morning, watch Chris Wallace on oh, Meet yeah. the Press. Good. And, uh, Just Sunday? Yeah, well, you know. And uh, they had that financial expert on there this weekend. And the hedge after inflation, of course, is the U.S. dollars getting tanked. The Fed's keeping the dollar strong right now because we are in the cycle of, uh, you know, inflation. Gas is up 40% from a year ago. Gasoline, 40%. Not going down as we go into winter, which it normally does. Correct. Right now, flights are up between 15% at the lowest if you book them right now, and they're expected to be up 1,000% come the holiday times as to what they were last year. And I'm going to say where this gets hit in the industry, especially during the winter, is going to be activities, outdoor events, those kind of things. Or it's not going to flourish and grow uh, coming out of Corona. We're past Corona now. Now we're back into the economy, and the economy is going to be soft for those kind of events. Uh, we have uh, Fan Expo coming up here at the end of the month on my birthday on Halloween. Yep, that's going to be a big. I'm test. curious to see what it's going to be like. You know what I mean? Especially with the max man, the mask mandate, and cosplayers involved. I mean, who wants yep. to cosplay? And well, the whole double mask thing means that yeah, your I cosplay that mask means. doesn't count. If you're just wearing a Spider-Man hood, you got to have a mask on top of that hood. Right. So, yeah, that doesn't count. Right. So you'd have to wear a mask underneath the Spider-Man mask. Or on top. Yeah. And mm. ruin the costume. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was just saying this weekend. And, and you know, honestly, I, I feel like it's probably going to be about the same as it was in the Springs. I think people, despite the mask mandate, will still want to go out, still want to have a good time. I mean, we didn't have Comic-Con for, um, what, two, two years? years? I mean, Try and stop people. I really think it's well, what's going to go on here. Yeah, I think go it's going to be fine. Get back to normalcy, right? But yeah. with that said, collectibles are still hot, and that's hot. what I was getting. Collectibles, see, we see the growth still. A lot of people are shocked by the growth. I was at a show in northern Colorado this weekend. 
uh, with uh, Paw Games. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a different area than the city. You can see the price difference in the, not only gasoline price per gallon, but just what people are willing to pay for goods. It's a little different. It's affected differently. They haven't had the inflation hit in northern Colorado that we've had in the city already mm -hmm. from real estate on down to gasoline. So, And one of the big things, the cities in general are experiencing this worst. I was talking to some of our collector guys the other day, and he was telling me, we sold out. We talked about this last week. Sold out of celebrations in like two hours. Um, I've had people going around. You can occasionally find them. Ken over here found some up at one of the targets. He told people online was there. An hour later, was gone. Yeah, cleared mm. out thirty minutes. So I'm talking it's to this crazy. guy about it. He's saying he's hit up every target in town. Can't find anything. All of a sudden, he decided to make the trip up north. Went up towards Fort Collins, Loveland. Started hitting up those small town areas up in Larimer County. Because I came back with a truck full of nothing but it. Because that, that stuff just wasn't. Sold I went here. to the Walmart in Fort Collins. All they had was junk. My, no. my bed is. <laughs> <laughs> they have a just missed that guy. <laughs> my, my is, <laughs> I normally don't look until I have it. And yeah. and real quick on that note, uh, there's been stories I've heard, and I talked to a couple gentlemen at the show this weekend about they don't want to see a store in or a store owner in a Target or Walmart buying seal product. Yep. Can't I blame you, them. You, yeah, and I don't blame them. You will never usually typically see me in there ever and i definitely ever wait for a vendor i just go by and check it out look at that corner if, short, short if, if you're gonna leave some there i'm gonna grab some but you know yeah. i'm not going out of my way to look for it you know? short of ken here with chaos productions you've probably not seen any of y'all these guys <laughs> there you might see peter parker you know around but not me and, and I, the funny thing is i talked to people at the at the show this on saturday and i talked to them it's like look these business owners because people are going after like oh screw the local comic shops through screw them uh, but you know what, quite frankly, with the labor shortage and everything else, the owners don't have time to go out and buy the stock out of underneath you. Well, they, <laughs> just saying. They're, we're not, store owners aren't getting the products either, though. So you have exactly. the reverse effect. They have to go to Target and get product because they don't have product in their well, store itself. You know, you actually just brought something up and I just need the, the mic for a minute here. And mm -hmm. I, I want to address something that I I've been seeing a lot of online, especially when it comes to like Pokemon cards and things of that nature. Like, there are a lot of people that will go and bash us saying, oh, you know, your prices are ridiculous for, you know, your your Pokemon or whatever. Um, people don't realize that, you know, businesses, they don't stay afloat. We can't provide for you if we're not making any type of profit whatsoever. There are some card companies that are like, uh, out, I'm not going to name any names, but there's some some game, not card companies, some, some game places in town that... Um, are charging like two dollars over wholesale for for Pokemon decks. I mean, that's great if you guys want to do that. I don't know how you're keeping your lights on, but you know, for the other you know people that are, it takes you. We can't just buy something at wholesale and then turn around and sell it for two dollars more. People, or we can't under. keep or or yeah. And if we run a sale, twenty five percent off, like we like to do for our customers and to you know to to be good and you know we, we we cannot make a profit and keep our lights on that way because then we're going to end up losing money so I, I there's i noticed a lot of bashing going on in social media and stuff for and it's not just us i've seen it with a couple of other you know um well, card and coin and, yeah and it's just it's i'm sorry people but you know that's how businesses stay afloat you don't we don't buy it wholesale so we could sell it wholesale. Stores just don't cannot keep the lights on that way. Well, and that brings me to two things that I'd love to touch on. We've talked about it some here, but the first is the myth that is MSRP, especially in the collectible business. MSRP has gone away. Literally, they don't even put it on well, some of especially in cards, sports cards and gaming sports cards. Sports cards, right? magic cards, Pokemon mm -hmm. cards. They don't even tell us anymore. And sometimes what they you are telling me MSRP is is what we paid the distributors. So we can't be charging you that because that's what we paid. Right. Only gaming that still puts MSRP on them and does it well, in my opinion, is Konami. Konami still tells us what MSRP is, and they keep it right around a good area where we can make They give profit. us enough product that we give us what we order every yeah, time. Yeah, they give us what we order. They're the only ones who right now are like, I can. you can almost guarantee where they're going to be. But even then, like the tins, tins we sold low to start, and then we had to start buying them at approximately MSRP, and so they have to go up. Because if I'm paying $20 out the door for them, I can't sell them at $20 right. out the door. Right. right, and people think that that's what we can do. And, and even like even with gold and silver ads, a customer come in and be very upset that we're, you know, charging 10 over spot. We buy it at spot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, it's about keeping the lights on. It's about being here for our customers. We're not going to be here tomorrow if we can't make any type well, of profit. Well, listen, whatsoever. that's just a little business 101. You know what I mean? A little supply and demand. But Yeah. And I think the other part of sure. this, though, is that you also have, we got lots of customers these days that ask about scalpers. Like, what do you do to stop scalpers? And one of the things I always have to explain to them is scalpers, as the term, as the way you're using the term, don't exist. Scalpers right. means you're doing something illegal. Scalpers <laughs> means you're selling tickets that you don't have the rights to sell. Those kind of things. 
if you're buying something and reselling it, that ain't scalping. You do that all day long. That's it's called capitalism. Yeah, it's called <laughs> thank you. You read, go. my, yeah, exactly. you read my mind, that. Josh. It's called capitalism, yes. <laughs> uh, and not everybody gets a piece of the pie. That would be called socialism, yeah, my friend. Economics. Economics. There we go. Well said, sir. All right. Just saying. All right. Well, we got to kind of drag this out because the beard ain't here yet. So we're going to start with gaming product, AJ. Get ready, baby. Game FaceTime. Nice. What you got for gaming product? Hottest new product this week in gaming was the Yu-Gi-Oh! Cyber Strike Structure Deck. We've been waiting about three, four months since they announced this one. Really hot deck. We were selling them at MSRP, $10 out the door. I know online some places were doing $20. There is at least a $10 card. It's like $14 card alone in there, infinite and permanence. To make sure everybody was getting them fair, we were limiting it three per customer. So you get a full play set of decks, enough to build your deck out of. And that left us with, we have... Well, I'd probably say about 30 left over there. Good amount. You guys can still come in and get them. Sold out of the Lost Art promotions during this. Lost Art dropped on the same day, and everybody buying $30 worth of time, that's what it takes to get the Lost Art. Gone in one day. Dang. But great product. The Yu-Gi-Oh! crowd's been kicking here. We had like 18 players out last night all playing. <laughs> had a special Cyber Structure Deck event yesterday that we had four players come out and play for, get some mats. Just very great good. times over there right now. Very good, very and good. Then, uh, today we had a, let's see, they're called Geeked Colorado is the group that came up and they did a horror trivia next door. We had about 12 people over there playing horror trivia, talking Damn. old school horror movie stuff. I wish I was here for that. Dang it, I had to go get my car. That I, was so much I was, fun. Most of the answers. I was gonna say, yeah. I was shocked to know AJ does not know the creator of Hellraiser. Yes, yeah, we I did not know that the creator of Hellraiser was Clive Barker. Well, that it came from a Clive Barker book. That's he's the creator of it, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, he was he in on the created, first movie, the book. second movie, he's out on the third. He did create both those first yep. two movies. Same way Wes Craven was in couple first and then got out you know? well when they start making symbiotes in the third one shoot cds out of his face yeah. in the club scene Gone. brutal gore scene but the cd shooting out of the eyeball sockets was really dumb yeah one of my favorite questions I, i'm sure most of our four aficionados here know it how many people did jason Voorhees kill in the first movie none none didn't kill anyone there wasn't even any blood to show. his mom no, his mom killed everyone his mom in killed movie. everybody in the first oh, movie but there wasn't Trick any question. Blood. That's a good old core question right there. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, let's keep it going Mama here. Loves her baby boy. <laughs> yep. Mama. Sports car products. We had none this week. No sports car releases. Panini makes some affordable football cards. How about that? That's a novel idea. People like football. They don't buy cards. We don't have any to sell because you don't make any product nor enough products. Cards. And that's really it. You don't you do a horrible job getting product to customers. I'm just gonna say it right here. Panini. Really disappointed. Get your game together, man. So, still not Come together. On. Ever since they've been a company making football cards, I've been nothing but disappointed. Especially since they've been doing Player of the Day all this month. I've been selling cards for 33 <laughs> years. Did nobody cares about their... Player of the Day kit? We did, but nobody cares. We promoted it on Facebook. <laughs> they, they, need pro they would need product to promote Player of the Day. So if you want to... Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Player of the Day is now over, but if you wanted to partake in that, I had, think I had two people. So Ooh. get a Cortland Sutton autograph for winning that. And it'll be a... Drawing of two people, so we'll... Two-person drawing, 50% chance. <laughs> 50, 50, 50, 50, for those Russell. two guys. It's Russ Ono and Eddie Hooker, so we'll see. Well, it's it's a flip of a coin. It, it, it makes it all nice, the old flip of a coin action. So we'll we'll live. Yeah, <laughs> live, live the flip of the live. coin. Player of the day by Panini. Woo. Is it two out of three or just one and done? I don't know. I think we should do two out of three just to up the Does it make the suspense? Yeah. Hey, real quick, thank you, son. <laughs> nice to see son with us. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being with us and interacting with us. Ask us questions. If you got collectibles you're interested in want to know more about, you know, well, we deal in coins, cards, comics, gaming, video games, everything you can think of under the sun, and comic books. And comic I guess, books. AJ? I, I think I'm the beard today. Take it. I don't know where he is. It's 4.34. Right. Well, uh, he texted me at 12 after, said that it, he was on his way. All right. Well, we're going to start fine. off. AJ got to pick these books anyway. We are currently it? on Beyond Chapter 2 for The Amazing Spider-Man. So if you guys have been wanting to get in on Spider-Man, the last issue, roughly about two, I think it's two weeks now, I believe these are bi-monthly on Spider-Man's there, um, is going to be a place you'd want to jump in. But The Beyond is a good story that's been kicking off here. Good intro here. And for a lot of people, we had people last week asking, how do you jump into comics? When do you jump in? Always ask that Spider-Man, great time to jump in. Good. Speaking new right, new team, creative team, right, basically? Yep, new creative team started on there. Here we got another one today. Number one of Iron Man, Darkhold. Darkhold, the new series that's going on, talking about that Darkhold book. Um, currently, Doctor Doom and the Darkhold book that we saw featured in WandaVision there. It's going to deal with a lot of darker, more magic side of Marvel there. Some great one-off books here. If you guys like Iron Man, if you like old school magic stuff, pick up Iron Man, Darkhold number one. Now, 
I figured we had to talk about this issue two since last week we talked about the Army of Darkness. Let's talk about issue two of the Army of Darkness series, 1979. Yeah, baby. My God, loving this one. If you guys like the old school Army of Darkness and Evil Dead stuff, if you are a Bruce Campbell fan, this is a book to get in on. Another number two, so you guys can find that issue one pretty easy. And if we don't have it in stock, I bet it's the kind that we could probably still get. Yep. So, and, and Sam Raimi and his brother are involved in all yep, these books. Sam too, Raimi involved, involved here. Now, th this was AJ's special pick. I was going to make Chris talk about this one this week because he hasn't yet. Warhammer 40K Sisters of Battle. Following the Adeptus Sariatus, the Sisters of Battle. It is a group of Warhammer um, women who are part of the military church there. And they all fight. In, hey, like, listen, that looks like suits. David Bowie on the cover of that. Is that the Goblin King? <laughs> hey, it might be. It's Warhammer. It might have a Goblin no, King. Sisters, I mean, it makes sense either way. Eddie Rhodes, what is going on? Eddie, what up? And of course, the number one oh, book yeah, we talked about last week, I got to talk about it's again. Like Hecklar. Hecklar. Oh, yeah. Comic book villain. You guys got to check this out. The first appearance of Hecklar, the all seas mascot in comic books by Cali Chronic Comics. The Peterson Brothers, thank you very much. Great job with the Peterson Brothers. Indeed. Going in that Cali Chronic universe. Like, taking a blunt man right off the bat, Hecklar. Giving a little pop in the face. Right off the bat. <laughs> blunt, one. <laughs> blunt one. Blunt one. Sorry. sorry blunt man. That's a whole other thing. Sorry. Yeah, that's another guy. Blunt one. Bunching him right in the face. So Is that in the face then? Ding. Well, in the dinger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. Can get you anywhere. <laughs> yes, you can. So yes, you can. Another person can get you anywhere is Trish and those pics from the show, show, from, show and tell with Trish. I don't have a you beard. You got a beard? Pics from Trish's beard. I shaved that earlier. I mean, hello. It's a show and tell. No. Trish is show and tell. There we go. I really hope that he was going to say Trish's pic from the beard. I was voice. almost I, uh, there. I tell you, I'm like Ron Burgundy with this thing, dude. Just put something in front of me or win my mind. <laughs> Just read everything. Hello, Scott, Scott, everybody. Scott, I'm Scott, kind Scott, of a big fuck deal. You, San Diego. <laughs> So, guys, it is the spooky season, and I've been showing you a lot of horror figures. Because <laughs> Ken likes to correct me on that one. And this is an oldie but goodie we've had sitting on our shelves for a while. You guys have all passed it by, and likely because they don't give you a window to look into these. I think it does it an injustice. Agreed. The Nightmare on Elm Street 112 figure. Um, Mezco. Mezco, that's right. We got the Kruger... Freddy Krueger action himself. I'm looking at the back here. It's got the interchangeable heads and faces. And totally sweet, in the words of Wheeler, that there is a face without the face and then a face on the side of that face. Oh, yes. Now, the how... Freddy Krueger skull face. Yeah. We have school? been blessed by the beard, everyone. They got blessed. the green the green uh, bone thing that you guys coming out, too, which is also really wicked and badass. No, what that really is is he was caught picking his nose, and that's it's the a big bug hanging off. It's yes. a big bug. It's yeah. lean but... and green and came out of... Hey, Chris, we should go pick one comic for your pick of the week this week. Anywho, <laughs> you guys, in the, I'm in the middle of showing off some hotness here. Yes. <laughs> and I ain't talking about my husband. Go on. Okay. So, anywho... Here we are in its glory. Ken, would you do the honors? This guy, his, the articulation on the Mezco toys, and I'm not the only person to say this. I love NECA, but the articulation on these is just unparalleled to anybody else. I'm, these figures are so detailed, and they move so nice and so smooth. They're not rickety. You can position them really well. Everything's just great, fantastic detail. The I articula mean, yeah, the articulation on these is second to none. Yes, uh, it doesn't have like a hot toys or sideshow collectible price tag, right? But it's you know they're hundred dollars on up typically. Yeah, these ones are not like go you know put in the toy box, play with toys. You know, as a kid, these are ones that are meant to be displayed. These are. And I got to talk about the this hand here. Creme. If you guys didn't see, we have six different hand options, but the best is the one where Freddy is going by, counting the ways he's died, cutting off his fingers in the green ooze scoop. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's the one finger spew it's green ooze. Good oh, shit. No, that we, fucking awesome. we established very good. this was his booger. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Either way, very, very cool. <laughs> very, very cool. And there's one other thing I just, not related to horror, but I had to show this off. We got a Rubik's Cube. There's only one left. <laughs> Love this thing. Yeah, it's it's been sitting there taunting me. I'm debating whether I should buy this thing myself, but it's the Garbage Pail Kids uh, Rubik's Cube, and there's one on the back. Um, and our E3 Arts Eddie Rhodes has redone this one. This this particular uh, Garbage Pail Kid on the back. Dead, of Dead Ted. 
Yeah, Dead Ted. That He's done a lot. Eddie, yeah. Eddie, 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 Eddie three wrote, Eddie three art, Eddie Rhodes art all over social media is about us. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Eddie. That's not, I worked that in there, Eddie. But anywho, um, <laughs> it, yeah, the, this is really awesome. Ken, would you do the honors and shirt? Sh- shirt. The person she's I didn't talking say about, shark. Dead Ted. That's Adam Bomb right there in the front. <laughs> it certainly sound like I did. Um, Tony, Tony. Let's know. There shark. it is. <laughs> maybe I just maybe. I wish Grim Jim my, was on this, but he's shark not. Shark just came out of my mouth. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> All right. But it, it, that's really awesome. There's only one left here. It's been <laughs> sitting there taunting me, and I'm like, wow, that just the the dead Ted. As you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dead that, Ted. Dead Undead Ted. Ted. Undead Ted. That's just so freaking cool. And then every time I see that, I can't help but think of Eddie because I know he redid it. Even though this isn't Eddie's original artwork, I still think of this as Eddie's artwork. And Eddie, who is currently telling us, you know he bought that at here at All Seas. <laughs> he did. He did. All right, let's go here, Chris. It's your time to shine since you're late. How was this house today? Wasn't bad. It wasn't that it was weird. Bad. Was it weird? Started Everywhere off, you go is kind of weird, Chris. It started off with nobody, then I got kind of busy, then I had nobody, then I got really busy, and then I had people come in at like 340. Oh. Kind of... Did they buy anything? Yes. Oh, that's good. That's I always nice. They better. Well, yeah, and then you kidding. can't <laughs> kick them out. If they're buying <laughs> stuff, you definitely can't <laughs> kick them out. Hey, my friend. It's speaking of Eddie Rhodes, <laughs> uh-huh. Eddie Art himself, happy birthday, big guy. Yeah, yes, happy birthday, Eddie. Eddie. Good Eddie. call. I didn't shout you out because of... It was your birthday, but now I recall that it is your birthday. I did see that on social media. So it is. It happy is. I'll birthday, sir. Happy birthday, Eddie. And to Tatum as well. Yes. I do believe she's 23. Yes. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yep. But happy birthday to her. A little father daughter uh, combo action day to day. It's good yeah. stuff. All right. What do we got? We got this oversized Batman audio adventures book. Ooh. It's like a comic book adaptation, which I think is a comic book adaptation of the radio adventures, but I honestly don't know. Did you get a record with it? No, but it's uh, like a podcast or whatever. That'd be cool, but you got like records. a podcast or whatever that they do the audio things on, which is kind of cool. That should have been your show. It's that old art style, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's several different types of artists did that because everybody's like multiple stories in there. But very stuff. cool. DC had some cool books this week, too. And, of course, when you're running late, you hit every single light red. And Always. doesn't want to cooperate. That's and just I how it works. Fast, so. That's yeah. how it is. But I'm here now. That's good. Well, thanks for being with us, sir. Thanks for having me, boss. <laughs> I'm glad somebody has. Well, right. All right, now kiss him and tell him that you're so happy. That hey, that's all right, that's enough. Oh, my God. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, 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 my. You got to join the Patreon for that. <laughs> all right, yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh, <my>. Patreon. <laughs> all, right. all right, let's move this thing along. Collectibles News, DC Fandom, Black Adam, Flash, Batman. All of them got trailers. Yes, sir. Hot trailers. Black Adams is good. Uh, Black Adam. Batman, Batman the Cape Crusader, and Flash all got major trailers. Your boy Robert Pattinson. Flash is looking good. I ain't my boy. Oh, Batman looks terrible. Um, I didn't Batman, hear what he said. Uh, I just saw him looking in the mirror or whatever there. Out of the three of them, Batman looks the worst. He's you know too, they he's too fucking like handsome to be fucking. Oh, he does he's have a bat look face. Like he looks like a bat, though. In Honestly, the face. he's not that handsome. I think Batman would have made a good Dick Grayson. Yeah. Or not Batman. Right. Robert Pattinson yeah. would have been a good Dick Correct. Grayson, not a Bruce Agreed. Wayne. You Agreed. know why they used him is because he's so damn moody. That yeah. guy's never smiling, and when he does, it's well, Bruce Wayne's weird. still crying about Martha dying. Way back yeah. Yeah. <laughs> never oh, got over that. God. He really never got over that. You just stole the words out of my head. <laughs> Most guys, you know, it's your mom. It's sad. You know, things happen in life. Though, oh, you know, so your mom would really want you to be happy. I would think your mom would want you to be happy more than anything else, other than she sending your knife to vengeance. That makes you happy. Tatum, if I die, just whooping the shit. I want you to be happy. The shit out of people. Whooping the shit out of people. Getting your bones broken. Then I think about it. Underage <laughs> kids for some reason. And then I think about it. Batman yeah, might have it all wrong. That's. I might yeah, want Tatum strange. to do a little bit of that actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really sure. Have all that so money. my Tatum, Eddie. Yeah. Happy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my right. favorite of the announcements there, though, is that next one. They have announced a new game by the same group that built the Batman Arkham City games. Nice. I it's love that game. Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. And Beautiful. Play is the Suicide Squad fighting and trying to take out the Justice League. Oh, nice. That looks mm-hmm. fucking awesome. Nice. Mm-hmm. Little video game yeah, news. I got a little review real quick for the new Left 4 Dead game. It's not called Left 4 Dead. I can't remember the name. Back for, Back for Blood. Blood. Uh, that's all right. It's more like a Metal Gear Solid mixed with Left 4 Dead all of a sudden. I used to be able to go to the safe zones, just get bullets, ammo, re-up for free, get an M16, didn't have to do all this other yeah, shit. Now I have to work and I don't like it. You know, the game that I would recommend, <laughs> we're in remaster season. Tons of remastered games coming out. You guys like horror stuff? On yeah. PlayStation, they just dropped Alan Wake remastered. Mm. It's like playing out a Stephen King book. All right. 
Well, in Left 4 Dead, it's still a shooter, spray and pray. I give it a B. Oh, so the entire game, <laughs> Alan Wake, your entire game, your best friend is a flashlight because you can't kill anything in the dark. If you don't have a light on, you can't yeah, shoot. Yeah, but that's too you much, just AJ. Like, you just like you roaming like, around. AJ, yeah, I just like to light shit up, man. I just want to light it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't even play video games with you because the last time that we played yeah, video I brought games around together, and shit. No, like literally we're playing a vintage uh, PlayStation 2 uh, Gauntlet Dark Legacy. And James is like, I can't even move my character because I'm stuck in a little nook. And he's over just do do do. And Listen, I was like, we got to make that hand here. To my no, credit, it's a $150 I, game now. I picked the barbarian. I believe it's is it really? Yes. Yeah. I, I picked the copy of for GameCube. Yeah. I picked the barbarian, it. so I, my character, I have to fill his role. Yeah, you have to, you have he's to the barbarian. barbarian. Yes. Well, smash. I have to get he into is, my he's role. Smashing everything, and I'm over here <laughs> trapped in the corner, can't get around anywhere. TNT session live. Absolutely, I get into that too. I've been yeah. playing that uh, the new World War Z, and I've never watched the movie, and I probably will never watch the movie it's or right. the second one. That's okay. But I've been playing the World War Z aftermath. You know who wrote that? You know who wrote that book? Who? Oh, you don't know. No, I don't know. Max Brooks. Max Brooks. Oh, Max Brooks, great writer. Mel I had Brooks. no interest in that. Mel one. Brooks's son. I was going to say. Comic Con. Very good man. He's a very good dude. Great man. The novel, the novel school is like comic style. It's like a pulp. But he, he I like mean, breaks down what you should do, and it's like a survival. Guide. <laughs> yeah, it's like a survival and, guide. Yeah, that's right. a better way to put so it. You were, so you were playing it, and it's it's a if you've never played the game or anything like that, it's really easy to pick up. Like I've never, I didn't ever play the first one yeah. or have watched the movie, but it is simply that what you're like, you load up on your bullets, get your guns and your really, is it? it? Yeah. It's, I'll have to play it. Yeah, I thought it'd be right more, alley, I yeah. thought it'd be more like dead rising or dead rising. You have to go construct stuff. What's the other one? We're in the mall. Oh, uh, Dawn of the dead. No, the video game. No, it's, oh. uh, I can't it's, remember the uh, zombie game. We're in the mall. It's a last good game. One standing? There's a whole genre of video game zombie is games. Is it the last I mean, one standing? Later? No, it's not. Last that. one standing? No. no it's last no. of us, I mean, last of us? No, no, no. I can't remember it. It's all right. We'll move on. Oh, I, I, I got dead, rising. <laughs> dead Rising. Dead Rising. Thank dead you. Rising. Thank you, you dead Rising. Thank you, Rising. I think I did say I'm that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> like I wanted to get involved, but we just got done playing Lego Marvel. Oh, oh yeah. I, I remember amazing. those days. But Jay, I miss those days. I used to do that on PlayStation 2 with my son or whatever it was. Yeah, you could go play with Andrew. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, we just passed Kang, so, you know. Oh, baby. I'm ready oh, for wow. Lego Skywalker. <laughs> if you got if you get stuck in Lego, anything, trick note, uh, go get on YouTube, tell them what level you're on. You know, when you get stuck in the puzzles, YouTube will show yeah, you how to do I, it. Just, okay, cool. You know, I can't do you it. Just I you had to <laughs> cheat. I no, you just go cheat on YouTube. My son told me that a long time ago. <laughs> You can so, find all sorts of unlocked clothes. My complaint on Lego right now, they just announced, <laughs> so there's a fan uh, voting system, like what's the next Lego set going to be? And they announced the winners were uh, some jazz, like classic jazz musician set and something else. But jazz the musician. ones that won That's and they weird. apparently that decided not to go with, maybe they couldn't get the rights, is the actual fan voted ones was The Legend of Zelda Hyrule Castle oh. and Animal Crossing from Nintendo. Well, why listen, did they not do that? that one they just cool. got in. They got Super Mario and a, literally a Nintendo. Yeah, like why do we need a jazz, old jazz musician set? Nah, that's who like is it? Marilyn Monroe, Dizzy Gillespie, or something. Well, well they just no, it's, it's just, it's just the jazz Infinity musicians. set. Nobody, fans. you know, that's all it is. Same. You saw this news. Because I think Metroid was the other one they also said. Hey, Chris, yes. sounds like it's time to sell them Legos. Time to sell them Legos. You know how this Legos right. is like we'll a talk. peak in the valley. We'll talk. We'll talk. Now, can I say that I'm not surprised that AJ was a big Alan Wake guy since it's about a writer? Oh, yeah. No, it might as well be about Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> and my question, my question to the crew is what does everybody else think of the uh, – some people blew up about it, but I don't think it's that big a deal that they changed Superman's motto. Oh, I heard that today. I put. Do you see it's what no I shared longer, on that? I put that little red sun, Superman. yet. It's not, red sun. it's not truth justice in the American way. It's truth justice and a better tomorrow or something like that. And they didn't just change it. This changed in 2014. They dropped American way. It was just truth, justice, and peace. And then they added a better tomorrow. Now American way has been dropped for a while oh. because the comic they dropped it in back in 2014, he literally said, I can't stand for truth, justice in the American way anymore because it's not just America Listen, that Richard. needs help. I'm that was get, the exact line. I'm going to get fired up anytime. Go, go, fire <laughs> Take out America at anything. <laughs> America, America. <laughs> Just get right up to fired up right off the bat. Well, you know, if we're especially at DC right now, because people are already fired up at DC. Anyway. If we're going to talk about that, I do think we should touch on. And I just want to because some clarification might be needed for some of you out there. Superman is not gay. Superman's son, Correct. Jonathan Kent, has come out as bi. Yeah, he's not gay either. He's bisexual. He's bisexual. Let, hey, hey, everybody, it's 2021. Okay, no bi erasure, everybody. Yeah. 
<laughs> Actually, DC is behind because Marvel did this like two years ago. And I'll so. leave. And I'll leave this in the sports news right after that. John Gruden getting fired. The, Ra- the Raiders kicking the Broncos' ass. The game right after that. But mm. John Gruden, you are the head of a CEO. A lot of people Should have one. Yeah, people have views of it one way or another. It doesn't really matter what your views are. It was his email. It was when he was employed. He's still a head of a huge corporation, whether it be. A car corporation, a football team, anything multi million dollar industry yeah. to do better, right? Any business, really. Yep. All scenes, I can't talk like that. I, my dad could never talk. I mean, you shouldn't talk like that, but Absolutely. beyond you know, that, you can't. I'm saying if you'd been talking like that here, that should have been filmed, put online, same shit would go down, right? You just don't do that. If you're in a position of power, you don't talk like that. Period. Yeah. So good for the Raiders responding well and showing the Broncos ever weaker than we thought they were on this team this year <laughs> in 2021. <laughs> Rough week. I didn't. I never believed the hype, sir. Never been excited about it. Never was excited about Teddy Bridgewater. Hey, I never drafted Teddy Bridgewater in fantasy, nor played him over Josh Allen in fantasy football. Why couldn't he have done that this week? I drafted him. I dropped his ass. (laughs) Who picked him up again? I did. I wish you would have played him this week against me, AJ. You would have. I'm just saying, last time I checked, we were literally at 50%, 50%, 17 or 117.5 points each. I just like, me and AJ are in a dead tie. When a dead tiebreaker means you go to quarterback points would be the tiebreaker. Your quarterback is not played yet. I have two Bills playing, Zach Moss and and their number one receiver. Mm -hmm. Stephon Diggs. You do better. Yes. It's good stuff. Yeah, Steph, all digs. You, you, you better hope they throw in Emmanuel Sanders a lot. It's what you're and currently, the Raiders and Cox, was, uh, in that in that, in that tight end Knox. 31-10 right now. Raiders uh, over Broncos. Wow, way to respond. Some people respond great from getting rid of racist. Some people don't. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever happens there, I don't know. But anyways, Josh, what a great Willie Way. Hi. Hi, how are you, buddy? <laughs> how are you doing? I'm 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 a, I'm a ginger, so I'm like one percent. Yeah, world. right. You have, yeah, yeah, exactly you right. Part. You're on your so. own bubble. That's right. Absolutely, hundred percent. Gingivitis, like it. Well, see, there it goes. It's already begun. <laughs> so. Oh shit! Before we do the interview, before we didn't do That's okay. I have freckles underneath this, Bye. and uh, I have. Auburn hair. Okay, Freckles. <laughs> Let's talk about buys of the week real quick because I forgot real fast. We could, downtown Kyler Murray 2021 Donner's card. Bought that at the show yesterday before mentioned in uh Loveland. I almost said Greeley in Loveland. Lovely, Loveland, Colorado. Where we got to see the air show, the Blue we, Angels proud. We nice. did. That was really cool. I, probably, I don't know if it was Blue Angels, but they're blue planes, so they're pretty cool, pretty dope. I got all st- I thought it looked like the Blue Angels. I'm gonna go with Blue Angels. Yeah. I'm gonna go all-star comics number 58. 9.6 CGC graded first appearance of Power Girl. Hot. Pretty hot book. People love Power Girl. Two of her beautiful assets. And that's a great, beautiful book there. You talking about her boobs? Yeah, she's got big ones. That's her whole thing. Not on it's this always book. been that. This way. is the Bronze Age, though. They're not quite as situated new, there. New, new 52. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not Adam Hughes cover there. Yeah, they don't look that big. I know. Either. It's old school. All right, next we got Star Wars, Hair to the Empire, number one. This book is jumped through the roof as of late. First appearance of General Thrawn, am I correct? Grand Admiral. Grad Admiral, so he's way better than a general. Grand right? Admiral Thrawn, Mara Jade. Hey, look at Captain America. What, out, what outranks a Grand Admiral? Anything? Not much. Not, Not much? Like the president? Much. Yeah, about that, yeah. Sidious, that would yeah. be it. I, th- I think he still asks for the Secretary of the Navy or whatever. But, yeah, but you have to have the answer. President, yeah, but they do mean the people ahead of you. Darth Vader's at yeah. him. Yeah, because he's, he's the man. He's the second. What about Grand, Grand Moff Tarkin? Probably not. Grand I mean, Moff? What's Grand Moff mean? Army, Navy. Yeah, so. I don't know. All right. He's well, like a general. You're asking him and you don't know? Here's the first. Like I'm asking because I don't know. Here's the first oh, appearance okay. of a Thrawn right there. Grand Admiral Thrawn. On the cover. On the cover. He's this book. Series except for the ending. This book in a CBCS 9.4 goes for $800. This book has been on the rise so crazily. Everybody, if you don't know about Dark Horse Star Wars comic books, you can often find these books in dollar bins at flea markets, antique stores. Here's a hint for you. Buy anything Star Wars, Dark Horse, if it's a buck or less. It's an easy one for you. I'll give you a free hint. Boom. Then bring them in all season. Drop them them bombs. <laughs> then bring them to James and negotiate. Yeah, negotiate, Josh. <laughs> now there's a good leeway for your interview. How about that? A little better, right? That was a little bit better. <laughs> better. As you did today, Josh has been a patron of all seasons for a long time. I've been trying to get him on this podcast. So thank you for finally it's getting like a day time. off. Time. I know, like but time. I want to have been asking you for, Yeah, feels like since COVID, right? Josh was that before trip. COVID? Negotiate. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's been a long damn time. He's been an essential employee, so like, <laughs> we, had him, we had him scheduled, and then he had to work. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm confused on it. Right, right. So yeah. any hoots. Yeah, I work understand. at a grocery store, so <laughs> yes. supply chain issues are affecting everybody. So I mean, so you're a front, front line uh, 
hero. Sure. <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> sure, I am. Josh was my hero. He when I yes, couldn't mine when too. I finally did run out of hand sanitizer and stuff like that. He was able to get me hooked up for Anthony and stuff like that. So we still have uh, – we're getting low again, but, yeah. like, we can't – Hey, don't be dropping his on Josh right now on this podcast. Yeah, right? yeah, for real. He's well, like, we're getting really low on groceries, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's easy to find. It's easy to find. Uh, it was. There was a lot of things. I want to get that angel soft. There, there There's no test. Josh and Hart drinks too much. Yeah. <laughs> So now people just think I, I, I go to the grocery store and just shop all day, and that's what I do. So yeah. That's how you do it. He is through, Instacart. Um, there, there were some things that were very hard to find, and I knew you know there was high risk at the uh, um, beginning of this that I wanted to make sure that those people with high risk got well, we still needed, and know? we're still dealing with that, right? So that's what we're going to get into. Right. The supply chains, not only in the collectibles industry, it's every industry in America right now. We are hampered by what's right. going on, um, and it's post COVID. It's this inflation. It's they want to rise the price of milk. Every how you seen grocery pricing? I mean, everything's kind no, of gone every, up, right? Everything's gone up. I mean, it's been more of a subtle and grocery. it was, but it's subtle in the last two years. So. Yeah, it 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 subtle if you look where you're at today when you go um, shopping to where you were last last year, even right. Um, but it's been this gradual thing over two years. It's really. been a gradual, especially like on uh, paper mean, towel, toilet paper. It hasn't been huge, right. but it's been subtle. Yeah. I mean, outside of that, how come with everything else though, like. For like milk and and like eggs and things like that. Why, I mean, it, it's stuff that we even grow here in Colorado. Why, why the inflation? Did they? Well, because you're all, you're also looking at you know, an issue. With, you still have to get the supplies to package like the plastic for milk. You know that's costing okay. more. That makes and sense. Then get truck same, drivers across truck, country. Truck, truck drivers. drivers. To, you know they're trying okay. to play crazy. I see truck drivers. crazy ass Swift drivers all over the place. I said they yeah, but those, those were the only ones. Well, I mean, we need, we need those <laughs> crazy. Hey, we, that cool? yeah, old Dominion. I haven't seen. Old Dominion, I, I haven't see seen Old Dominion show. hardly at all, though. Well, if you I think about it, Old Dominions all the time. But that's because I'm on the. But that's local. That's that city. That's city delivery. So, that's so not long over. Even with so you got Coke trucks on the side supplies of the supplies to that's city. to package the product. You got <laughs> you got to deliver it, and then at the same rate, you also have a shortage on help. So yeah. I mean, that, that that's all. So are you yeah. affect, how does that at the store? So like at Safeway, for example, you have enough. You had a new location now, so mm -hmm. you're pretty good on employees. Um, no, because they're going back to school too, right? Yeah, you, got, so you lost yeah. teenagers, right? So I mean, it, it's a constant College thing that you're always yeah. we're always hiring people. So, like young I mean, adult workforce is a big thing. People don't realize in this country, you scare young adults into not wanting to work more than they already have. Then they're right. not going to work. I mean, but then at they? the same rate, you got to look at the. How, how much can you pay somebody, you know, yeah. in entry level position? You know, you just can't start them off at top dollar. Um, what, what do you guys charge? Uh, or I mean, charge, what do you guys pay like entry level jobs, like some, some cart. outside of carts, like outside of check, carts? So checkers if you're, if you're over, stocking. If you're over 18, that's a big positive for you, right? Because that right. gives you the whole store. And then you're looking to start at, you know, 15 bucks. Yeah. Or what about a, a 40, 43 year old male that uh, has a degree? But hasn't worked in a grocery store. Before. But is he going to do the same thing as the eighteen-year-old? Well, does he want to work with a butcher? Well, does he want to slice and, meat? He's going to like maybe do warehouse stocking stuff. Who like are you that. asking for? It? it all depends. I mean, if people want a job, you, there, there's there's work, jobs. Safeway's work hiring. To be done. <laughs> yeah, Safeway Warehouse. Oh, here on the radio. Brothers, so. If you're watching this, <laughs> I mean, Safeway's hiring. Get I mean, out of mom's house and like go get a job. And, no, legitimately, <laughs> everywhere's hiring. Just go get a job. And with that, there's trades like truck drivers. I mean, that's a trade that. People are so don't, don't yeah no trade schools it. I mean yeah it's big, one of big trade hit. schools are fantastic we need more everybody should go um, to trade school meat, rather than regular college we we have a meat meat cutter you know we still cut our own meat yeah you know, that's what the great thing about Safeway but, for. but those that's a dying breed as well yep. so you know and it is a lot of these as we talk about trades that is the thing that is being targeted the most a lot of these people who know they have a skill that is kind of a trade skill like butchers truck drivers they're the ones who are often speaking out now and I don't know if you guys have caught John Deere. Just yes, that's right. Just They're commodities, what they are. Huge. Just like uh, airline pilots for Southwest. Yeah. So just, uh, just like John Deere yeah. mechanics, especially John Deere started, Caterpillar, all these companies. They started putting mm. people who were desk workers in the warehouse after the warehouse people went on strike. And one hour in, one of them crashed a tractor and had to call the ambulance. Oh, my God. <laughs> How much that going to cost you, huh? Oh <laughs> and we'll see. That's where we're talking. So that's leveling that out. Now, let's talk about this. How do you level out collectibles in your life? And how do you get some collectibles? A little bit of collection your, your own personal little business at home. 
Like, um, so what I do is I bring it back to James if mm -hmm. I don't need it. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, yeah. <laughs> whether whatever it be, right? And we won't discuss what it was. No, we're not going to discuss what was brought. You know, <laughs> Josh is a pure collector. I mean, you don't want to get rid of your good shit, obviously, no, no, and I know right that. Here, you right. Know? <laughs> so let's talk about what, what are you currently reading? What what on your whole side? Your first. Uh, what so, are you looking forward to the most when you pick up your books right now? So I'm right now with my um collectibles. It, it, I inherited a collection for my uncle you know a pretty good size substantial 1990s and 80s good base for you to start though in marvel especially a good base and then there it, there was some holes in it so what i know what i did when i got the thing was i cleaned it up rebagged and boarded it uh most of it theme boxed what? it rebagged and board yeah bags are that's that's a big deal right now <laughs> Get bags and boards. so and then i just collect by filling in the holes you know for the collectibles um for the collection so i have a full all of the early 90 venom stuff the one the three um comic sets you know all in here it's my symbiote box so yeah mm -hmm. right nice. um and then yeah that's pretty much what i do i mean i look forward to my daughter getting her books because they're in my hold slot you know that's fun she's helped me do a lot of this so. yeah so i was watching her enjoy comics is almost right. as fun. it's more fun than you enjoy and comics. absolutely so i got a five-year-old who's now he's learning how to write in kindergarten and stuff now he's like you can't really read it but he's making his own comic books yeah you know? so, so it's well because comics tell it's a picture, right. story. Yeah, anyway. it's a picture story absolutely it's a picture story and then he puts his you know handwriting in it there's even so. better yeah, story so right. josh's daughter just went to pro, uh, homecoming? homecoming homecoming and when i was talking to Josh, I like well she'll be fine she's read a lot of comics she knows how to handle herself yeah she's she's a negan fan too sorry Ryan. Right. so you know <laughs> you read comic books you know how to handle <laughs> shit life yeah. experiences on the page it's right true. she knows where it's to true. kick a guy to make him drop you know? right. <laughs> so, Done, son. that's right it's not a punch in the shoulder it's a you know <laughs> yeah it's a kick in the groin exactly boom 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 I, I did happen to allow that date to happen um the Ooh. the young collectibles were involved the collectibles were involved there was a trade that went down so you know whatever <laughs> Josh so can't you tell you what he got some, but your daughter for some collectibles i traded Understood. no I, tra I traded yeah. my yes a <laughs> piece of permission yeah. Yeah. to a dance to a school function with uh for a larry walker hall of fame bobblehead yes yeah. I, I i did that so. there's a certain time she needed to be home right yeah 10 o'clock 10 o'clock i was outside not a minute late you know? right so. exactly my uh, dog's name is Lucille, so you know I have a baseball bat. <laughs> Lucille's at the ready. <laughs> All right, brother, show us some of the stuff you brought in, my friend. Um, so you go ahead and show that yes. that box. Cause... Do you trust Ken to put this in front of a camera? Oh, no, I but it's. <laughs> I'll give it to. You. Hey, don't put your thumb Look, on this. I've already touched it once today. Okay? Hey, Chris, um, you're gonna like this. It's book. already lost. <laughs> Ryan, this is a book for Ryan Haggerty. We've seen Ryan Haggerty but price his book all over the place, haven't we, Chris? After the events of today, this is why I keep Chris around. So yeah, because this, he knows this, what he knows what this book is. So this book is one of. Don't get taken for a ride on this book because this book <laughs> is actually the second volume Silver Surfer. It looks almost identical to the first volume. It's fan, Marvel fantasy masterpiece. Yeah. good old reprint. So. Yep. Stan Lee was a master of doing that. So was DC, but, actually, at the time. Yeah, the and Marvel it's boldly like printed there, but it's so easy to overlook. Right. So it's, Yeah, Collector's Edition, uh, Marvel Tales, yeah. all those. So it, it's one of those books yeah. that I thought I'd bring to don't get taken on a ride. On that one. <laughs> <You> <laughs> Ryan know? takes that ride all the time. <laughs> I almost got Ryan when I was negotiating. <laughs> yeah, you buy his comics? You guys don't buy his comics? You can go on a ride on. Right, This right, is right. a big boy. Right. So which one's that? So that's Eternals number one. You know, that's... Gonna be it's just going to go up in the next month. Yeah. Which Trish yeah. needs to read this. Really, that's the Celestials right there. That is the yep. start of the Marvel Universe. Jack Kirby. You got to get me one. Yeah, he's a, being the genius of Jack Kirby and comic creating. Uh, knew a lot about different religions. He drew, you know, he created right. Thor out of North mythology. He was a Jew. He's Jewish uh, by faith. Um, but he had he knowledgeable in everything, so well, it was really cool. He, even about that. He kind of blended all of it. To the Superman that we talked about, he originally was the messiah coming down to correct him, you know right um, yeah because that, that well, in judaism yeah the messiah hasn't come yet so right. he's coming from right to to help them with their oppression right and so yeah they so, still you know very much comic books it. religion politics they all kind of work together if, if you can 
you know, just have fun with it. And Jack know. Kirby was yeah. <laughs> Jack Kirby went and made his own universe basically in the picture of the Eternals being the, right. the higher power. It was really cool. Uh it's his retail of what is going on. Well, and then they have the other they redid the cover again. It was a reprint of the King Size Annual number one, which is still is now it that one's to gaining value it's a 16 dollar book. what's also cool about that book that's his second run back to marvel so he's originally created marvel uh stanley left went to dc then comes back after making up with stanley oh, they got rid of stanley and after stanley gods, was literally gone right at so that he point went to DC, he did new gods and then he came back and basically made marvel's version of the new Gods. right the new so, so he made the celestials in two different stories basically yeah. he made the new gods he, had he made the eternals he wanted to tell and then okay. they, you got thanos or dark side which right. one you got just know what you're buying <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. That's cool. Just know what you're looking at, you know. Exactly. Good well, stuff. I will now. <laughs> well, Jack Kirby made the backbone of both universes with so significant. Right. So anyway. there's one part about the Eternals movie I've enjoyed. Um, have you guys seen so the Indian actor in that got super, super buff for his role? He previously had been a comedian and the I thought it was a guy playing Namor. Uh no, no, the no. he's playing one of the Eternals, an Indian actor who like got really buff for it, and then he ended up going in a bunch of these men's health magazines, basically being like I wish anyone had told me. Yes. Wait, what? No. No. No, no. Taylor. His name's like Tay. Oh, I I will look this up in a second. But he's been in a bunch of these magazines recently saying like he wishes he'd read the the comics more first and done some of these things because he didn't need a superhero looking body to be this character was a big part of it. He he felt very, he was like, I felt like there was a lot of pressure and stuff on it to look like these other superheroes, but like superheroes can look like anything. Isn't it always a good idea to research some shit before you did? (laughs) That was kind of my thought. It's like, you didn't read the Eternals before you started? Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Connie from um, Walking Dead is actually going to be that. She's hearing impaired. So oh, that's really? Cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. In the Eternals. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, I've got it here. So it's Kumali Nan- Nanjiani, I believe Nanjiani. is how you say his name. Um, you guys have probably seen him. He's a comedian super. actor. Yeah, super. This guy. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, so great. he got ripped for this. And then he's like, honestly, it like really messed with my psyche because I'm not a buff guy. And I wish I'd realized I wasn't playing a buff guy to begin with. <laughs> What's he doing? So, yeah, so why did they even have him do that thing? He's just been pictured after Batista or what? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> they were actually going, going for tracks. a, like, yeah, it was like, a stupid like, with Batista. Like, she was like, I had nothing to do with him getting big. I did not. I wanted him in the way he was when Listen, we filmed the movie. There's only one uh, uh, fucking Batista here. <laughs> it basically is just a misunderstanding. And he thought that's how superheroes had to look. Wow. Real quick. None of the Eternals are that. Grab that, no, that no, mic. No. Grab that mic. Nobody can hear you. Nobody can hear you. None of the Eternals were that buff. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, that's why you should. Well, they're huge book. giants. <laughs> they <laughs> are. They're like Galactus. They can make any size they want. But right? I mean, they're not. They're, they're the not power like a, 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 Apocalypse Galactus. Yeah. Have you guys seen the end of that What If series yet, where Ultron takes over a thing? Yeah, no. man. Well, I kept wanting to see a Silver Surfer and Galactus the whole time, and they don't have an answer to that. And he wasn't in it, so. I, I was disappointed. So Ultron would win. Up on the big screen so guess too. what? Ultron would win. That's just. I mean, story. I was disappointed with the what if because they made uh, Thanos so big. Disney did. Oh, they killed him. You know, seconds. and then he was like nothing in the what if series. Well, Ultron like, is a badass dog. <laughs> Ultron was the biggest threat, I think. Yeah, he if he would have won, threat. yeah, I totally. AI agree. is the way it's at. It's gonna kill humans every <laughs> day. Terminator. <laughs> Skynet, baby. <laughs> Thanos. Down <laughs> what else did you bring, my friend? Those, show some of those sweet covers you got. Oh, uh, we got. You got some sick shit in there. Well, what's the in that symbiote box? There. I'm in the symbiote box minus the Batman. That's did you see? Did you see Venom two yet? Okay, I have not. Josh Reagan, I, I want your honest review on these Marvel boxes. Um, so see how gentle he is with it. Yeah. This is a really good shape. So <laughs> the Marvel boxes, I totally, I, I like them. I think it's one of those things that you can upgrade your collection at home. It's cool, you know, um, where your Venom books are, though, right? You know? So, that's what I've done is I've done um, Venom, or, or actually, all symbiotes are in this box, right? Um, and then I got Spider Man for Spider Man, I got Captain America for Captain America. I'm still looking for Punisher, um, to finish the do the Punisher line. I got Superman, Superman. Um, I think it, it makes it more eye catching, yeah, in the house. So, well, I like them. organization, too. So- yeah. I've got a handful myself. I like them. I actually really do. Mm-hmm. My one issue, and they fixed it, 
So this is a – they don't need to fix anything now. This mm-hmm. was a problem. Well, as long, long as they solved it for AJ. They, they, so the Marvel, Marvel to DC, Marvel was releasing a larger than short size box for a while. Right. So like my oh, Incredible yeah, Hulk right. and a couple of them are like slightly different size and they right. don't look the right size on they my don't, show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then Chris, <laughs> and, Chris and I, yeah. we ordered that trade paper box, paper box, box trade, trade, trade paperback box and fucked everybody up. Yeah. Because it's like narrow, wide, in, it's supposed to go in, yeah, short. So my only issue is that it's, there's some that are a different size and right. that means there that is. my collection right. doesn't look even. Well, because BCW right. makes one and NECA makes the other one. Yep. Am I correct? Right. NECA and BCW. So I, I mean, I like them. They're they're kind of uh, they're upgrades to the regular white long box, you know. So and they help for organization, like James said. So absolutely, hundred percent, dude. Passes up to James. I'll yes, sir. You, yeah. Up. All right, James, I'm going to need you to stop scoring now. You're taking a lead here. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Teddy got another uh, touchdown. Uh-oh. So uh, James is just going to no go Teddy, through the I'm box. Saying, I'm going to go through the box. <laughs> I'm going to pick up. Hey, I dropped him because I had two better quarterbacks. I'm going to go because this is all the symbiotes. Check out Ooh, this cover. Look at that cover. That is a hot cover. I love, I love that book because it's like American traditional tattoo style. I know the artist on that. Can you so, give credit to him? I have no uh, art. Birdman. 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 Check that out again. Show that up there again. It's a Grim Reaper. It's Venom God, right? Is that yep. Uh, yep. what's no. his name? King and Black Null. And this is just remind me. I don't got no art to show you guys, but we have talked about maybe ordering a secret layer in here at the store because they are doing a new secret layer. I had to show James and Chris of old school horror posters for Magic. And man, looking at some of these covers, that does yeah. make me think of that. Well, then I'll say this one. This one it always kills me. I don't do not like anti Venom. I don't like the same. <laughs> I don't like the same behind arm shooting guns. <laughs> yeah. I don't like them. I don't like symbiotes making agent breakfast. Agent anti-venom. Yeah. Agent anti-venom. He doesn't even reload guns. Yeah. No. I don't need them fry bacon. I don't need them shoot guns. They don't need guns. They're fucking they symbiotes. Yeah, Do you they don't have need the bacon. first appearance right. of agent anti-venom? <laughs> uh, no. Eggs. So it's it's uh, Venom Inc. Alpha number one. Okay. Ken would know that. <laughs> Ken would know that. I got it from James. Yeah, Seventy five dollars. You did. You did. Let's give Rodney Ramos some shout out right there, my boy Rodney. Out in New York, Toxin. out in Queens, that's old Toxin right there. Hopefully, we can get Rodney out here in March for the Fan Expo. I'm really working on. I want that to be my comic book that, artist in March. We've been trying. Rodney Trish, is a hard guy to pin down. Hopefully, we can get Trish to uh, contact him on Monday on that one. Let's keep rolling here. Well, you can't go wrong with this. The first Venom ongoing series, limited so, series. Josh, first you really book. made a mistake here, just so you know. Why? Just handing James the box. He's just flicking through it. Man, this is James. This is what he likes to do. Oh, he I likes well, flicking This is what James box. does. He will pick out your stuff. I'll pick out the five or six books. That he wants. Tell Russia's you the rest of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, James is as always taking care of me when I brought stuff in. So, if you have stuff lying around the house, like an underdog, just bring it into James, and he'll give you. And he Good is right. And I said this quote <laughs> so, last week, I think, or the week before. Oh, you're right. Bring it back to the shop you bought it from. Right? Logically, you For have sure. a relationship with everybody. If you bought it from a different shop, go bring it to them. Give them a try. See if they can get it back. Well, Josh right. knows everybody. Yep. Everybody's name. Josh when he walks brought me in some here. magic cards today. It is just bulk, but we got him five dollars yeah. for it. But it cleaned up the house. You know, that's and that's what we've been doing. I will find someone who wants it. <laughs> exactly, and that's what collectibles are. I mean, you don't want to. I don't. I I do have a nice collection but i don't i mean if somebody else could use it i'm not gonna scalp them on it you mm-hmm. know it's like well it's just i think that's the first time where carnage appears in venom's book and his own book one of the early battles right yeah there. i'm always carnage about venom. dealing with yeah. real collectors i don't want to deal with people who are trying to resell specifically i want to deal with somebody who knows that they like it and they maybe are looking right. to because they got two moving on collectors is who you want to deal with well there's one of the best covers of all time oh yeah i don't know if it's oh, weird that first she venom i'm only attracted to that or <laughs> But it's venom with titties. That's weird. Uh, we call that a latex fetish. I don't know if Trish can get that outfit or get that custom made. It's pretty badass. All of that mouse scares the hell out of me. So it's yeah. Very so when, when when I got um my uncle's collection and my collection, what I did was I had to go through and I had doubles and triples of some absolutely of something. So you know, that's just gonna take up space. And you know, if I'm doing these theme boxes, you know, that's just gonna take up a lot of money <laughs> so, well, the nice thing about short boxes too is they stack well they're easy to move you know right as you become old as we are they're easy to move i, around, I right? keep myself in long boxes, long boxes right beach, man dude. taking one of those out of my basement uh, hauling it upstairs and i'll, I'll just I want to see chris if you guys keep your stuff in the, in the basement, basement. <laughs> If you keep your yeah, stuff yeah. in the basement, it should probably be on pallets because you right. don't want no water issues. Right, exactly. Yeah. Your boxes. 
Ryan and Ken help me. Help, help the crap. Or you're gonna have like a Gilbert Grape hey, situation. Ken knows all about my boxes. He helped me with a handful down. of them. So yeah, <laughs> if, if there's if there's ever a fire at my house, we have an emergency plan. The wife gets the kids and the dogs, and I go down and I start hucking the comics out the window. Out the door, <laughs> yes. We have a basement window that is just the size to fit the long boxes. Absolutely. If you ain't planning to get your collectibles, are are you even planning in your yeah, fire emergency? For real. Yeah. <laughs> no significance to this book, but I love that cover. It shows you how such a fucking amazing cover. And it makes a great bold statement to how the symbiote consumes you as a human, right. sucks your freaking skin right off you. Eventually, ultimate power, there is just venom. The right. ultimate power and ultimate greed leads to ultimate corruption. That sums it up right there. Okay, so this actually brings me to something I want to ask you, Josh. Josh, I said John for a second. Um, <laughs> have you read Spider Man Rain? No. Okay, great story. Spider Man Rain deals with Spider Man when he's like 80, 90 years old. He's given up being Spider Man, but Venom never aged. And Venom takes over the whole goddamn city. So I, I did read the last Venom when their symbiote connection was so tight that he's been keeping Eddie Brock alive for like million or thousands, a hundred years yep. or whatever. And just when he actually had to let him go, that was like, yeah, that was pretty rough. So Spider-Man is <laughs> another one that was, I believe only published in graphic novel form. So you yeah. need to pick up the graphic novel for it. I don't think there was individual comics, but was. Oh, there, oh, Chris would know. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful series though. All about old school, like 80 year old Spider-Man yeah. peeing his pants. Cause he can't hold it anymore, but having <laughs> oh, to fight Venom, who's literally taken over okay. all of New York city. Right. <laughs> well, well, I like you know the story where he killed Mary Jane because his the semen was cancerous. Yeah, it was uh, radioactive and gave her cancer. Love that story. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, AJ loved that story. I um, I, you know, I, I got James. Yeah, you made me look. Damn it! Back to the Bride of Venom. Now. Bride of Venom. Back to that latex suit. Who's cosplaying the Bride of Venom? Can you get my wife that suit? We need to get that. The Bride of Venom suit. A little latex Venom suit. But I was gonna say the reason I haven't seen those Venom's movies is because I don't like the point of how it didn't bond to Spider-Man first. The whole reason Venom wants to kill Peter Parker is because Peter Parker rejected it. Much why they say the symbiote and feminism's not gonna like this, but they said the symbiote was a fem female for a while, that Venom was actually a female because she was scorned that Peter Parker gave her away. And, and I don't know if they she only bonded to males. There was a whole thing for a while. Like, yeah, and I don't know. She's only bonding. And males. then they made that Bride of Venom, so I don't know where I didn't read all those. So I don't know I where it really went. Venom movies because my man here, Chris the Beard Packham, and Damien next door could not give me a good review between the two of them. Well, there's no spider on his fucking suit. You can't go in as a comic person <laughs> and thinking it's a comic movie. Well, so, that's a way. Hold, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> it's based on a comic book character. I've so what the fuck am I supposed if to? If you're gonna be? have. Sony fucks everything up. So am I supposed to think it's something else? Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna <laughs> try to merge Spider Man with him, you kind of gotta go halfway at least. You and know? by this, so point, apparently they did a teaser alert. They I guess on the new teaser, one, yeah, they see by Peter the Parker on the news. Right. Yeah, but like, the that's, not, that's not the same as being bonded physically to him. You know right, I mean? right. Because he was seeing bonded. his purity. He's pure. Peter Parker is like a pure human being. Big part that's what makes is. Peter Parker great. Which makes Spider Man great. Which makes Marvel Comics great. Venom is only Venom being he was just bit by a spider he's but he's a very normal that's yeah. what makes it great okay. so but a big part of this is the venom suit when it originally bonded with peter it took parts of his dna and so that's the reason the right. venom always emulated spider-man and the webs and all these things if it never bonded to peter first everything happening in venom makes no right. sense he's just shooting tar balls i don't know is that what he's doing <laughs> well he's is never like tar ball? he's never actually like he's always jumping or climbing is he not web never, shooting he's never web shooted at all oh. and I, I made sure i watched for that in that second yeah. one right uh, is because is he's he shooting the symbiote? He's like, look what we can do, is Eddie. We can this? do so many things. No, is he doing this at all? He, nope. It, there, there's literally more of the carnage style <laughs> where he's just whipping things around, <laughs> grabbing them with the the symbiote. Oh, and eating shit, frying eggs. Tentacles. I saw those tentacles making eggs, so that's all. Yeah, I saw. The ten that tentacles Brian know bacon. how to cook. Did they ruin the carnage? Though I feel like they ruined my boy carnage. I saw Woody Harrelson with that wig dog, and I did not that like that. That was enough to ruin it. <laughs> I did not like that. That's like throwing a wig on Kim In, right I, now. I, I like Woody Harrelson. I like Woody Harrelson as Carnage. Although, I got to say, I secretly always wanted Steve Buscemi in Carnage. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, Steve. man. Well, they that still around. I mean, yeah, yeah, they went soul. after the no. R, And they didn't get the rated R. He passed away during COVID. Isn't Steve Buscemi dead? No. Kim Belushi? No. Steve, Steve Buscemi <laughs> is so dead. Yes, yeah, he I think is. he's dead, guys. Yeah, he is. I might be wrong. No, no, John, totally. Belushi, 
John he Belushi is definitely dead. Years old. He is not dead. Oh, Ooh, right. I thought he was dead. Yeah, I thought he was dead. Maybe it's just one of those. He got divorced during COVID. I just watched Lebowski. Lebow- hey, I just watched. I just watched Lebowski one too many times. Hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, Donnie's dead, but Buscemi. Vietnam's died. fucking over, man. <laughs> Donnie. The, you owe me an egg McMuffin, Steve Buscemi. Uh, you have no frame of reference. Ah, <laughs> oh, good shit. I, All right. I, I mean, if you're gonna make a comic book movie, you gotta you honest. gotta at least. Come close. How has he you not, Steve Buscemi, not been in a comic book movie, by the That's way? That's what I'm asking. I just assumed Tony he was dead. Was perfect character yeah. for him. But yeah, it wasn't. I mean, I don't know. Would he? Would he be great if he was not? If he wasn't Ma- uh, Mickey and no. fucking Natural Born Killers? I, He's already played that role. I need to avoid. If you were going to do it's a I great movie, to be him improving the role basically. He yeah, no but then he's just going to be Mickey. He's just going to be Mickey. Then yeah, Mallory shows up that. out of nowhere. Yeah, what's going on? It was a love story. Okay. The the other news we didn't get to. Did y'all see? Adam Warlock got cast, and it's yes. it's the kid from uh oh, what the fuck is Fucking that? Uh, Meet the Millers. Meet the Millers. I like the part of the. Yeah. I do see that Pawn yeah, Stars meme. And, yep. and hey, Rick from Pawn Stars. Best like, I can give you. <laughs> the, the kid who gets his nutsack bit by the spider on Meet Am the I Millers. Paid now? <laughs> They're like, oh, we want Keanu Reeves. No. Am I getting paid now? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I don't know. That kid has a big chin. Yeah, we'll see. You know. I mean, I would like Warlock. As any, but I just want hey, Warlock in the goddamn movie, Keanu so Reeves I will take him anyway. I have a Warlock any and, way, please. If and I'm new Keanu Reeves, I'd be fine with him being like a huge name, like one above all. Make him literal god in Marvel. Should have made him ego. I already messed that up. Yeah, though. you already fucked up ego with yeah. Kurt Russell. Right. I mean, with with Adam Warlock, you know, you do the Affinity War saga. I guess is what they're calling it now. The Infinity War Gauntlet. And, and, and yeah, you do it without Adam Warlock. You tease him in the beginning. Right? I know they didn't tease. Him. <laughs> And it's kind of, all they've done is disappoint comic nerds, dude. That's what really we are your base. Him. That's why we're ranting about Venom. Oh, the kids answer. Oh, well, they didn't make a comic book movie for comic book people. What? No. Why are you making comic book movies? Yeah. What are you making them for? Well, why would they buy the rights to Venom and not Spider Man? The same. I don't know. Stupid. Well, it's like Star Wars. You know, you gotta. We didn't make this for the Star Wars fans. Yeah, you those know, last three were, movies. Well, who are you making them yeah. for? Yeah, yourself. Yes. You're making it for Karen. <laughs> Everything made for money. Karen nowadays. Yeah. Karen's More running shit. Money. Karen and the mouse are running shit right now. That's all I'm saying. For real. That's it on that I note. Hey, mouse might be Karen. Yeah, they might be. But they did give us. Karen all. Mouse. I'm, I'm going to shut up right now. We're going to stop there before. The mouse did give us the Ultron we needed. Yes, he did. He okay, did. That, also, <laughs> that final episode was fucking great. And then just when you think Netflix is going to go one side or another, they released the Chappelle stand-up. If you've not seen the oh, Dave I Chappelle stand-up that. last I week, heard, I heard about that. check it out, Dave Chappelle, man. We've been stand up for everybody's game. rights. He might be talking about a, being a black man, which he is. So he only knows the perspective of a black man. But he is standing up for everybody's rights in this country, including transgender people. So if you look at the message, what he's saying deeper, you know, yeah, watch that, Dave. Yeah, it's like freedom that. of speech, dude. <laughs> yeah. He's a comedian. It's a big, big problem. So go watch that Chappelle stand up, everybody. It's a good thing. Um, Josh, anything else? That's all I got. Just be nice to everybody. Yeah, dude. Be cool. Nice. Let people do stand up. We can't do stand up anymore. What is the life of the stand up comedian going to be in the next five years? Canceled. Canceled. Well, yeah, funny thing was, is like, people. um, you can't make fun of culture, which is what comedians have been doing. If I can't years. make fun of people every day or, or you, yeah. Chris, what am I going to do? I might as well just go <laughs> make fun of us all. I might as well walk out to the forest and die. James I'm can't done. Make fun of me, AJ Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ryan. I'm just going to go away. Yeah. I'm out of here. Let's go to the forest. That's really sad. All right, let's Just fade away. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go to my little witch's hut. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be witches. All right, Kenny, what do we got for con news? We got exciting con news. Well, first and foremost, the Denver Fan Expo is uh, in less than two weeks. Uh, James is going to be there. The All Seas Collectibles is going to be there. Trish is going to be there. Trish is going to be there. I'll be there with Peter Parker. Peter Parker got a booth. Uh, so. Oh, and- Everybody's selling their stuff, so go in. Artists are still Peter being Parker should have got that booth at uh, Loveland, probably. Yeah, cheaper. no, that would have got a booth for thirty-five dollars at the Grand Slam show. It's a hell of a show. Great shout out to Grand Slam. Grand Jason Slam did King, a really good job. Jason King, great job this weekend, man. Thirty-five dollar tables for that Grand Slam show. Check it out in May if you need to set up in your collectible dealer like Peter Parker. Three tables for a hundred bucks. There's one booth for 900 at Comic Con. Sport again, support your local comic shop, Peter Parker. I was surprised about how many toys they had out there. Uh, Quick going to GameStop. Anyways, go ahead. (laughs) But exciting news is we did officially pick up our first sponsor for the All Seas Fan Expo. Pocket is going to be that Rhodium Danny Williams (laughs) level. Rhodium. Is it Rhodium Rhodium. or Rhodium? Rhodium. It's Rhodium. 
It is Rodini. Uh, AJ so, settled this last time. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep kids just gonna keep saying that shit wrong. Yeah, but <laughs> they got they got that, and uh, they're gonna be getting a couple extra tables. They basically got a whole wall to themselves. We are thank you guys for for what we have already had. People are uh, committing to. We're half full on these tables, guys. You know, everyone says, "Hey, I know James. James is gonna get me into the con March fifth and sixth. All C's Fan Expo. Wrong. New location." Double the size. We have out of state vendors coming. We have out of state artists coming. We only have 20 artist tables available free of charge. We're not charging the artists. It's it's one of what James and all C's has done and gives back to the artist community as much as they can by not charging the artists for the artist tables. But again, we have limited space with that. Well, you know, you got to give back to the art that makes comic books. It right? makes so. so 20 tables. We have three people signed up for that. So if you're not already going to allseascollectibles.com. You got three people set up? You got only Jason. three. What do you got, Eddie Rhodes? Eddie Rhodes hasn't even filled it out yet. Oh, come on, Eddie. I actually, most <laughs> of our main artists haven't filled out. So just call us all our guys. Don't Eddie assume, Rhodes, hey. Vincent, my own wife. Don't throw the old, I, yeah. don't throw the old, I know AJ, I know James <laughs> thing out there. Go fill out the website for him, please. We're <laughs> not people who don't know us can be filling those spots. We ain't responsible for you. You know what I mean? The website is. They will fill up fast, especially, you know, we we. Dead set on that 20 number. And just a table selling quick. Jason King just texted me right now. He's listening. Thank you, Jason. He wants tables. You know, we got to get all these collectibles.com. The all seas fan expo tab. There is a uh, form you fill out under the vendors. And if you're an artist, there is an artist form to fill out. If you want to suggest a guest, we've had a couple suggestions. So that's nice. It's something I'm able to be able yeah, to I want to know. Do. I mean, we can get wrestlers. Uh, if you're tired of Power Rangers like I am. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you want to get a wrestler? Get... Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, about the Power Rangers. Can we get, just get a different? Well, I. We color, keep going like red. One? Yeah, yeah, we're all red. They're all red. Can we get a blue? <laughs> Can we get a blue? <laughs> Can we get a green? 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 It's got to be all green? buds all day long. Yeah, seriously. What the heck? <laughs> getting messages from my own wife saying she needs. <laughs> everybody, I got to just go. Saws, we're getting blown up right now. Thank you, everybody, for watching the LCS Collective Wheeler. Wheeler. I know, we're not done yet. So, Can you get it real okay, quick? Yeah, March 5th and 6th, All Seas Fan Expo. Get on there, allseascollectibles.com. Go fill out those forms because we are half full. And, but we don't have very many artists. We have one artist from California and two of our local artists have signed up. And that includes Chris Salas. He's already signed up. He was the first one. Yep. And again, uh, and people that wanted to get Grand Slam, I heard people say they wanted to set up a Grand Slam, didn't get a hold. Get a hold of Jason King, Grand Slam cards. They're in Greeley or in Greeley and in level two, two locations. Get a hold of them. Yeah, we have another store in uh show in May for them too. So March and May, two locally owned comic book card stores putting on shows. Both before the actual season kicks off. This Those is gonna be the time to get in. Support local Colorado shows. So yeah, Boom. and we do have sponsorships available. Deadline on getting those, and they have to be paid for because we have to pay for the advertising. Well, is November twenty first. Your table needs to be paid for too. Yeah, we have to pay for the tables. <laughs> get deposits in. All that. <laughs> yes, but the advertising we have to pay for. They don't do it for free, and then no. uh, then us charge it. So, no. uh, if you want a sponsorship, we have two fifty five hundred one thousand. The flyers on allseascollectibles dot com under the All Seas Fan Expo tab. And have, do they pay for their deposits? Is that is there a link? PayPal. It's going to be paid. Get us up. We'll get, we'll, get us up. We'll get, you know, when I get the emails, I'll send all that. It's easy. Out. I'll okay, send the perfect. invoice. Real quick props to Donald David. Thank you, Donald, for keeping our streets safe out there. We do need more cops. We need more civil servants, ambulance drivers, uh, hospital workers, police fire officers. Fire. officers. You know, to get paid $40,000 starting to be a police officer is not a job I would want to get into. Most firefighters these days volunteer. So go respect the people that are here to help you. $40,000. That that's pretty much what I made my first job out of college. In your life, not on the in line. In 2009. So I want to. Yeah. Throw one last thing out before we give the Wheeler call here. Everybody, we have talked about the supply shortage. We talked about it more today. But what I want to let you all know now is if you have not yet started Christmas shopping, you need to start. You can see some of our stock in the pictures behind us here. We are well stocked still at all seas, but I'll tell you right now, Two all locations. weekend, I've had people coming down buying Christmas gifts. I've been selling Christmas gifts left and right. And at the rate things are going, late November, I cannot promise you what we're going to have. Well, especially if you see key issues. You know your husband's collecting key Star issues, Wars. Key toys, and key we have cards. That, you need to get that stuff We have now. a CGC number one grade in the case. And you know he doesn't have it? Better get it now for sure. Because come November, I'm not promising anything. Yep. Absolutely. Mm, fair enough. Better get that Power Girl first appearance as soon as you can, Chris Backham. It's a 9-6. You it's can pretty. Christmas get pretty. All right. Time for Wheeler. <laughs> I don't know how those picks went today with that Broncos. You can stay with them Bronco picks, but Ooh, I know he's good on that season one. overall. Mile high, 
Sports Radio, bringing you Mike Wheeler. What up, Wheeler? What's up? How you doing? I'm doing very good. I'm trying to understand this. Is that guest of yours a copper? No, that's Josh. He works for Safeway. Okay. He's not a copper. I understand. <laughs> so, uh, Mile High Sports Radio and Danny uh, sponsor my picks. I was 21-10 and 10 until I put down today that the Broncos would uh, win on a money line. It's not going to happen, and my no. prediction is uh, do not bet on the Broncos the rest of the season. There is a problem then. Yeah, we're going uh, tanking, huh? Not good. This is a pivotal game for the Broncos this week. Very pivotal, and uh, I don't like it. Bad energy. Yep. So in regards to last Sunday night's pick where I took uh, Buffalo Bills over Kansas City on the money line plus 135, it hit. I'm going to give an easy little parlay here. Money line tonight, Pittsburgh minus 145, Buffalo minus 165, and uh, that's it. Hey, Trish. Yes, sir. God told me to stop it at this point right here and say goodbye because he knows I should not say anything more today. I wish I wish you well, Trish, AJ, James, Beard Boy. I have a gift for you, Beard. You're like my father. I love you. Later. Like my father. <laughs> he's like my father. We love the beard down Sometimes here. Think he's, he's everybody's father. father. Josh, thank you very much for being with <laughs> us, my all friend. Beards, yeah. kids. Yeah. Great. Beard Always no nice kids. having you, brother. And thank you for all you do for all seasons uh, all the time, my yes. friend. I try. Hey, thank you for coming on in, Josh. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Everybody hey, have a great night. Keep collecting. Broncos. Everybody. Get it together, Broncos. <laughs> Damn it.